Remember this old LEGO set? 34 years later, LEGO remade it into an adult product while also keeping the box design with the yellow borders and the angled stripe for the set's name, a style that's proven to be successful given how LEGO has done it a couple times already for similar remakes. This nostalgia-fueled product will bring tears to classic pirate fans, but be warned, there's something I really dislike about it. But before that, the set has 8 minifigures, well 9 if we count the dead one hidden somewhere, with 2 pirates both wearing grey torsos for the theme and the guy here with a brilliant face print. The Imperial Guard has an army of 6, with the governor having a different torso from the rest, golden shoulder piece and a printed hat. Then there's these 2 female officers with the tricorn hats that are dual molded, having a different colored hair section in the back, and lastly the 3 soldiers with the long hats, the muskets on their hands and carrying backpacks. The pirates still have a rowboat with a printed pirate flag on the back and a small monkey to keep the Imperials distracted. The original El Dorado Fortress had two rowboats, but the Imperials got an upgrade on this remake, a modernized version of the ship from the Imperial Trading Post set. We can't really miss the cloth sails, three different ones with the middle one being printed, and this came packed in a paper envelope, which was great to see. The sails are held in place with Lego bar elements and strings, flags up top and the ship's body has this nice angled section in the front. The white hull shape was made with fairly recent curved slopes, the back has hints of cannons, a lantern and the rudder down here. A slightly raised spot for the ship's wheel, a sword and a bag down here, and while not being that big of a ship it still manages to fit every imperial inside, but the highlight of the set is of course the fortress itself, with a small dock at the entrance for the passengers to unload. Despite the obvious similarities, the major difference with this one is that it doesn't have the raised baseplate element like the original model had, so all of the landscape is actually brick built, including the cobblestone patterwork of the entrance ramp. So talking color, there's lots of grey for the stone work, medium azure color for the water and tan for small hints of sand in some places at the base of the build. The black dock leads into a pier that wraps around the front of the build and the fortress itself is most mostly white, with hints of dark red that replace the original model brick prints and the classic lego yellow for the base of the actual building. There's also a few palm trees front and back, green leaves for what I like to think are seaweeds stuck in the rocks, out of which one was actually missing from my box and got replaced by an ingot element in the pearl dark silver color, a mistake from the factory as the element doesn't show up in the parts list. There's also a little waterfall slash cave on this side here but more on that later on. The structure of the build remains unchanged, there's these gates that lead to a small entrance where a few weapons and random items can be found, right next to the main plaza of the fort so to speak. There's a pot cooking something to be served on the table there, next to the place where gunpowder and ammunition for the cannons is kept, which the fortress has three of, including this one at the ground level. It's built on a turntable so it can turn, but in its current position it is a bit hard to handle and take out the ammunition rounds at its base, but it does work like regular cannon elements do. To the corner, the prison cell with a key right next to it, kind of feels like a long arm would be able to reach it. The roof can be removed to access the interior or this window section here. Lego cells are the worst, cause there's always a way to escape them, and in here the pirates just need to raise these planks and jump down, which will lead them to that cave I mentioned earlier. Neat hidden secret here. Right next to it there's a cargo crane a surprisingly clever build in my eyes, complete with a winch and string long enough for us to load and unload cargo from the fortress's interior all the way outside to the imperial ship with no issues. These places are accessed through ladders and the third one leads to the governor's office area, a small space with cool building techniques such as the one for the window here or the brick built door. There's two muskets fixed in position to defend the entrance ramp, peeking through holes in the wall, similar style that can be seen pretty much everywhere in the fortress. This gap in the wall though doesn't make much sense, for now. There's a similar one in the back and the place is rather cramped, with a cannon right by the governor's office desk, seen on the open back build. At the top the last cannon and the printed imperial flag. 
There's a lot more to this set though, a full cave system that's not even shown in the box very clearly. And this whole thing is actually modular, making it possible to combine the model in different ways, like this one that's longer and less condensed. The connection points are made with clips and bars, which is great over using a system with Technic pins for instance, and because of this modularity some of these accesses that didn't really make sense before finally kinda do. The biggest module is the one with the ramp, in which the cave part has a barrel full of coins. The plaza section can be turned into a larger pier slash dock with a few seaweeds by the water and a small lever that lowers a ramp to access part of the cave system underneath the whole fortress. The section by the entrance has a few barrels leaking wine to the floor and if you're wondering, the set does come with a frog. The crane module just has a tight passageway, and the second biggest module has a treasure underneath, accessed through this trapdoor. Here lies the Eden ninth minifigure, a pirate that got stuck for some reason. Now the way this matches the passageway under the crane leads me to believe the dead pirate was trying to get to this very well disguised crate that has a letter inside. Opting to go for a wider display rather than condensing the old model makes you lose the sense of enclosed fortress, but on the other hand makes it significantly easier to play and access all of the rooms and hidden features of the set. It also makes me kinda curious to see how would it look like if you were to combine two or even three Eldorado fortresses together. The Lion Knight's Castle is considered by many the best LEGO set of last year and due to its popularity probably the reason we got the Eldorado Fortress this year. And as someone who never had castle or pirate sets in my childhood, these sets give me no nostalgia whatsoever and yet I was completely blown away by the castle's building techniques, hidden secrets and all of the play features. Without having any expectations whatsoever I absolutely loved it. Because of it I had I expectations for the Eldorado Fortress, thinking I would be having a similar experience as the castle. But I didn't. This set does not have the raised base plate element the old one have, and so we actually have to build up the terrain to have the fortress sitting on top. Looking at the box images I wouldn't have imagined it, but more than half the time spent building the set was used to build very similar rock structures on the five different modules of this set over and over again. The entrance ramp sitting at an angle was a clever building technique, but besides that, everything grey on this set looked the same, was built the same way, and that, on a personal level, wasn't enjoyable at all. With that out of the way, I can only offer praise to this set. The modules are split into different instruction booklets, so this is the perfect LEGO product to build with someone else. The price of $215 for a LEGO set with 2,500 pieces is great value by today's LEGO standards, while also having 8 minifigures, 0 stickers, cloth sails, and a great looking display model with a lot of options to offer. I don't love the LEGO Eldorado Fortress, but I'm happy for those of you who'll go absolutely crazy over this. And given the success of the remakes and throwback sets done recently, this will definitely not be the end of it. Subscribe for more LEGO set reviews and I'll see you all in the next one. Very spooky from the looks of it.